What's up guys? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here down in my lab in Denver, Colorado and I wanted to do a day 20 update on the breeding project. So we finally got some crosses that are meeting with each other. Um, that's pretty exciting. So there's a couple of them and ideally these two colonies should merge together and form clam connections and then they will create compatible haploid, or, uh, haploid to diploid mycelium and if they're not compatible they'll kind of um, segment away from each other and those plates are, are never going to produce any mushrooms. So at the same time um, we've got our black pearl king that are starting to grow out. So these were just single spore isolates that came from a one times 10 to the four serial dilution. So another method that I have been trying out with um, kind of mixed success is a multi-spore liquid culture solution. So I showed you guys how you could do your multi-spore jar culture um, with the rice bran and per, per, uh, perlite mixture in a jar and that will create a multi-spore environment so the strongest mushrooms will outcompete each other and then hopefully we get some fruits from that. Um, but another technique that you can use if you have a really clean spore print is to do a multi-spore liquid culture. So I know that my black pearl king um, are pretty clean spores because there was no contamination in all of my plates that I did and there was some plates that never grew out. But um, going off of the original spore solution, um, we could probably pull up enough spores in a syringe, in a you know a 10 mil syringe and add it to a sterilized liquid culture and then as that incubates and um, is agitated by the stir bar those spores will germinate and form clamp connections with each other in the liquid solution but it's very important that the spores are super clean because otherwise you're going to get contamination that's flourishing as well so I know that I'm only getting one times 10 to the four CFUs per mil and no contamination, which is pretty clean on these black pearl king oysters. So I'm gonna go back to my original spore solution here. This is, um, that one's a blank, but this right here is my black pearl king. And I've got my 10 to the 4 dilution. You can see the spores have settled significantly at the bottom, so you're definitely going to want to shake these up beforehand. But I'll go ahead and flip the camera around and clean out the hood, and then I'll show you guys how I'm going to do my multi spore liquid culture. Um, all right. So I've got my hood cleaned out. And now I'm going to be taking my 10 to the 4th dilution of the Black Pearl King Oyster. You can see that there's quite a bit of spores still in solution. Um, and I'm just mixing it around right now. It's always good to give it a thorough mix. You can use a Vortexer. Um, this helps a lot. Or adding surfactants. As long as they're sterile and they won't harm the mycelium, tween 20 is a pretty good surfactant. So you can use any pipette really. Um, we're just going to be transferring about 2 milliliters of the spores into the liquid culture, which has cooled overnight. So you want to make sure that you're using a room temperature liquid culture. So I'm going to mix up this solution one more time. 
and it's priming that syringe so that it stays right around that two mil mark. Now, if you didn't have a laminar hood, you could just wipe off that port with some alcohol, but it came sterile right out of the autoclave. Alright, so now I'm just going to be adding the two mils of the spores. So there should be about four CFUs of viable spores in that solution. Maybe a little bit more because the spores have been hydrating in that water. So then the spores should begin to germinate in the next 24 hours or so. And as that stir bar spins on the stir plate, those germinated spores will interact with each other and hopefully they'll create some new strains, some new genotypes, and then we'll put that into grain and then grow it out till fruiting. We can go ahead and label with the strain and date. All right, guys, so I've got my liquid culture here. Um, it's a multi-spore liquid culture. So this came from spore solution that have been diluted out four times. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and place this on the stir plate here and let it mix around for about 72 hours. And then as those spores germinate, they should collide with each other and form plant connections. Now I would like to note that haploid and diploid are more specific terms to the oyster mushroom mycelium because of the amount of chromosomes that they carry. A more broad terminology for the exchange of genetics that happens at a clamp connection would be between a monocarion and a dicarion. So a monocarion only carries one set of genetics, dicarion has both. And as you can see, the two germinating spores are represented by a solid nucleus and an open nucleus. So in solution, these spores will be germinating and colliding with each other and forming a clamp connection, which is depicted in this photo right in the middle. And these may or may not be present in a field of scope um, so they could be very difficult to detect, but essentially that is how the mating of mycelium happens. And it is quite a miracle that it happens in nature at all. So I've also got a couple plates left here. Um, I went through a lot of plates doing this whole experiment, but I tried to save some at the very end so I can do some cool stuff. Um, someone had mentioned that they wanted to see these black pearl kings crossed with another strain. So I'm going to, before I hack these up and split them into their own isolate plates, I'm going to go ahead and cross this with uh, maybe a couple of the pink oyster isolates. So I'll flip this around and do some fun experimentation. Alright guys, so I'm working with two isolates. Um, from the Pleuratus de Jamer pink oyster species. We've got PDJ B2 and B3, which are 8 and 7. And then on the left here, we've got our Black Pearl King streak plate isolate, and then also the 10 to the 4 spore solution isolate. We're going to cross the Black spore, black Pearl oyster isolates with each other, and then we're going to introduce the pink oysters together systematically so that we'll get some cool cross species mix. So I'm attaching a fresh blade using a number 11 for this because it's a little bit more precise of a cut. And then I'm labeling these two plates A and B. 
just to make labeling easier in the meantime. Taking off the parafilm. And then I'm going to transfer a segment of A from the streak plate, which is a haploid mycelium, and we're attaching that to a fresh plate. And then we'll also cross that with plate B. So sticking with the same blade, we're going to be transferring A onto two additional plates so that it can be crossed with 8 and 7. There's going to be A8, AB. Now I'm transferring B to A. I'm going to use a fresh blade for each of the isolates. And once I get this on here, I'll kind of just fast forward through, but essentially we're just crossing every isolate with each other on their own Petri dish. And hopefully we get some matches. Okay guys, so there you have it. I've done a cross with two different isolates of Pleuratus de Jamer um, to the Black Pearl King. And then I've also got my multi-culture or multi-spore liquid culture. And if you want to go crazy, you could probably even take the spores from the pink oyster and add them to a different liquid culture and see if you can get some crossbreeding that way. Um, Anything could happen. But the reason I didn't do that is because my pink oysters, um, it, they had a lot of penicillium in there, so that would probably take over. And I'm kind of just trying to focus on seeing what happened with these two isolates compared to two mils of my 10 to the 4 dilution. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't yet and you don't want to miss any more videos about breeding mushrooms and doing laboratory mycology work. Um, thanks for watching guys and I look forward to the next video. I'm going to continue this breeding process until we get some fruits so stay tuned and mush love.